Hi, in this demo video, we are going to look at how Ansible can be used for disaster recovery. IT disaster recovery often requires a massive amount of preparation work for both the IT and business users. Any mistakes may, may potentially cause a failure in audit, and in the case of financial industry, get the bank, for instance, into issues with the regulators. So it's often an exercise that needs to be done regularly throughout the year and something that's not very well received by IT operations because of the sheer amount of work that is needed to be done. In this case, we will be looking at a disaster recovery trail, the typical of which will require things like identifying the application group that we have to fail over. We will perform things like an off-cycle backup, disabling monitoring syslog for instance, before we are able to perform the failover to the disaster recovery site. And then once the application is up on the DR site, we will do things like re-establishing, monitoring, syslogs, and along with other actions. So really, if all these things are done manually, it will require a lot of people to be involved. And what happens then is that we will often have to make sure that things are working properly, can be done within a very short period of time, even if the number of applications increases. So a better way of doing it is really to be able to leverage on things like automation and in this case Ansible to help on this. So in this particular demo showcase, what we will do is to be able to perform an automated disaster recovery drill with a three-tier application. We will automate the failover of the application from the primary to the secondary side and reinitialize the application on the secondary side. After which we will then fill back the application to the original site in an automated fashion as well. So these are usual steps that the disaster recovery team or the operations team in this case will need to be able to work on. And we want to be able to leverage on automation to do all this rather than having to get everyone back on site to perform this activity. So the architectural demo that we have uh, is a rather straightforward one. So we have active passive setup of the application. So what we have is a global load balancer. In this case, we are using a HA proxy to simulate. We have a local LTM, right? Also a HA proxy. Then we have an application, a web application, app one and app two. And then we have a Postgres database. And after which, if there are issues, for instance, in this case with the AP Southeast one region, which is in Singapore, we will fill over everything to AP Southeast two region in Australia. So what will happen after which is that, you know, all the traffic and services will then be routed over to the secondary site in the event of a disaster or failure in the AP Southeast 1 region. So a very high level overview of the workflow itself. We will start off by creating the workflow in Ansible. And what will happen after which is that we will perform things like health checks, stopping the front end, the app server, the database server, checking that the application is fully down on the primary site before deciding that we will proceed with the disaster recovery drill itself. Once that is uh, decided, we will then start the database server in the secondary site, start up the application server, the front end, followed by a health check to make sure that everything is good before we update the global load balancer to swing the traffic over to the secondary site. And then if everything is good, we will we will make sure that we declare that the disaster recovery drill has been successful. And the thing that comes after that is to essentially roll back whatever that has been done. We will then make sure that, you know, we, we check that everything is still running properly in the secondary side. We'll stop the front end, the app server, database server, check the application is down, start up the database server on the primary side, start up the app server on the primary side, start up the front end on the primary side, perform a health check, update the global load balancer, make sure that it points back to the primary site, and then we end the workflow. So all this would have taken quite a fair bit of time if you were to do it manually, but if you were to use Ansible Automation Platform, in this case, it can be done in a rather easy and straightforward fashion. So let's go to the demo next. So in this environment, we have a couple of servers in both the primary and secondary site one in Singapore, one in Sydney. So we see that this is our application on port 8080 over the global load balancer. Right. This is a very simple application. It's a Flask application using a Postgres database backend. 
we are just navigating across the application to show that everything is uh, working properly All right so just clicking on a couple of links to prove that everything is working properly in the primary side So this is the HA proxy, the GTM that we have in the architecture. We have it pointing to the primary side. You can see some traffic coming in and out. So everything is running fine on the primary side. So this is app one, app two. So we just want to prove that on the disaster recovery side, everything is not running, services are down, all traffics are just flowing towards the primary side. So let's go to the Ansible Automation Platform GUI. I'm a DR engineer in this case. The projects that we have defined over here is just for the disaster recovery, pointing towards my Git repository. So these are all the different job templates that we have that will help us for this particular exercise that we wanted to do. So my inventories, primary site, secondary site, the different host uh, that is running within the primary and the secondary site is essentially a mirror of each other. It's just that it's running in different regions in AWS. So templates. We will run the DR uh, workflow template, right? So in this case, this is the exact same kind of workflow, right? That we saw earlier in the slides, right? So we will essentially shut down everything in the primary side and then move them over to the secondary side. So we hit the launch button by the disaster recovery engineer. We see that the app is healthy on the primary side. We'll stop the front end. We'll stop the app server. We'll stop the database service. Over here, what we're doing is just to make sure that the application service on the primary side is totally down. Before we proceed with a disaster recovery uh, failover action. So now that everything is down, we are at the point where we will have to make a decision whether we want to proceed so i will need to come in as a change request admin to give the permissions needed in order to you know approve the um, workflow to proceed with the failover so i'm going to hit the approve button you can always deny right if you want to so now that everything has been approved what will happen is that the workflow is going to continue. So the database will get started. The app service will get started on the secondary side as well. We'll start the front end. And we'll do a health check. So everything is good. We will then update the load balancer to make sure that it points to the secondary side and directs all traffic to the secondary side.
So just to do a refresh to make sure that everything is still running. So if you look at it, we can see that now it's pointing to the DRL side instead of the primary side. So we go back to the primary side, we can see that all the services are down as expected. So those are all shut down by Ansible. So we check the DR side and everything is up on the secondary side. All good. So just going to check on the app layer as well. and. Uh, both of the app virtual machines are all serving traffic. So next up, I'm just going to show you the rollback that has been automated as well, uh, which is often overlooked by uh, some of the organizations on the need to also automate, you know, the rollback from the secondary to the primary rather than just uh, focusing on one direction where we swing the uh, applications from the primary to the secondary, we will also want to be able to automate the reverse action so, so that everything can be fully automated in this case and not having to rely on you know, all the different people. So we launch it. So this is just really checking the application status, right? making sure that Everything is running on the secondary side and nothing is running on the primary side. Uh, in this way, we will be able to then just ensure that we are in a good state before we start the failover. So all good. And now we are stopping the services, right? The front end in the secondary side. We'll also stop the app service in the secondary side. Stop the database service. Perform a health check to make sure that nothing is running on the secondary side. Start up the services in the primary side for the databases. App service. Front end. Okay, now that everything is back. We'll then update the HA proxy to, to make sure that all traffic gets directed back into the primary side. Right, so it's all good. This is really what we wanted to show in this demo. All successful, all done by Ansible. Everything continues to work. The app works properly. Now the HA proxy is pointing back to the primary side. Just now we saw that it was on the DR side. So everything is back to normal. Right? We're just going to couple of refresh on all the different URLs that we have just to show that everything is still working properly after the failover and rollback. Yep, and the DR as expected, the site is down, all the services are not running. We hope you enjoyed the demo and hopefully you are able to use automation tools like Ansible to perform a disaster recovery drill rather than having to do everything manually. Thank you.